Good morning, everybody. Welcome to St. Liberace Church. As we draw close to Holy Week, we hear Jesus talk about his approaching death. Yet, his message to his disciples is not so much about his death as it is about eternal life. As Christians, we know that as difficult as that is a true focus, a true hope is an eternal life. Trust me that our Lord is a source of eternal salvation. During this final week before Holy Week, let us keep in mind that just as a Lenten journey will not end in Good Friday, but with Easter, so too does our own life's journey end not in death, but in new life. Frank's tour. As we came to 
knowledge our failures, our sins, so we will prepare ourselves to celebrate the Holy Sacred Mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have great sin in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. To my own fault, to my own fault, to my own fault, to my own fault, reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt, for they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from least to greatest, shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud tears and cries to the one who will save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you. Unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loses his life, whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw myself, everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. Through the words of the gospel, may our sins be wiped away. Amen. This is said every time the gospel has been read by a priest or a deacon. These readings talk about spiritual life and death from different perspectives. Life is trusting and letting God into our hearts and trusting him to mold it according to his desires, which then becomes a transformed heart. While death 
is always caused by sin. As I talk to people every day at work and, at, and encounters that I have every day, it seems that less and less people believe in sin. I can honestly say it's nice to see the confessional lines growing here at St. Laborious before Mass when I leave the rosary. And I'm going to make a public service announcement and say that confession service will be held this Wednesday after the 7 o'clock Mass. The world, to me, seems to be going in the wrong direction. I judge this by how people drive on the expressway, which I drive every day. And it, it is e even getting so bad here on Stager Road, I almost got into an accident because a guy almost rear-ended me, going too fast. On the expressway the other day, it was raining, I think it was Thursday, okay? My wipers were going so fast I couldn't see the, the front of the road. I'm going 50 miles an hour, a motorcycle, probably going 60, 65, weaving in and out of traffic. And I thought to myself, how selfish could that guy be? If he falls, somebody's gonna run over him and kill him. And that person who runs over him, his life will be changed forever. All I can say when I drive, my heart needs to be transformed and it needs a lot of work. If this is happening on the expressway, it must be happening in all facets of, of, of their lives. The reality is that as people become more selfish, they have a false sense of belief that they can accomplish happiness on their own. There is a saying, if you don't believe in God, then you will believe in anything. When God is taken out of our lives, we think we can do everything on our own. Then life situations become difficult to cope with, which causes great anxiety. Studies show that 39% of people in this country live with chronic anxiety, with a lot of them being debilitating. Society has been influenced by evil so much that people believe a lot of stuff society spews out at them, which is so contrary to God's truth. Living against God's will will always cause anxiety. True happiness is only found in Jesus. In our first reading today, the prophet Jeremiah talks about a new covenant. A new covenant means it's replacing an old covenant. What is a covenant? And how many covenants were there? A covenant is a relationship between two people who make a binding promise to each other and work together to reach a common goal. It is usually accompanied by an oath, a sign, or a ceremony. Marriage is an example of a covenant because its common goal is to help each other get to heaven and to raise children together. There were five covenants in the Old Testament. They were with Noah, Abraham, Moses, and David. These covenants were based on God's law and were meant to be lived out by his people. In the Mosaic Covenant, God gave the Ten Commandments. Man thought that ten laws were, must have been easy to follow, so they created 614. Man, like usual, was wrong, because he couldn't live by ten. So those covenants were always broken. The basis of the Ten Covenants is to love God and love neighbor. And as long as people would trust and partner with God, they would enjoy many blessings that would last for many years, which is stated in the book of Deuteronomy, which says, Know therefore that your God is your God. He is the faithful God, keeping his covenant of love to a thousand generations of those who love and keep his commandments. This should remind us that our actions today will affect generations to come. God has always kept his part of the covenant, and this reading shows God's mercy in action. Because man has always keep, broken his part of the covenant, God has never abandoned, abandoned his people, so he establishes a new and everlasting covenant. This new covenant will last 
forever and, it is, and is established through Jesus. It is through Jesus that transforms us. It is through Jesus that our sins are forgiven and forgotten. This new covenant does not abolish the old law. It is internalized in the hearts of everyone. Through this new heart, we will then be able to distinguish what is right and wrong, what is truth or error, and gives us the will and desire to love and to be loved. This is what is meant by the psalmist when he says, Create a clean heart in me, O God. This new heart gives us the ability to, to love and forgive, not out of obligation, but eventually we live it out naturally, so it becomes second nature. Today's gospel takes place five days after Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, and the Greeks followed Jesus, and they wanted to see him. They must have witnessed the raising of Lazarus, but they still had doubts. That's probably why they wanted to see him. The raising of Lazarus is the culmination of Jesus' miracles, and all of Jesus' miracles were meant to show that Jesus has control and power over nature. Even death had no power over him. All of Jesus' miracles lead to the Eucharist. The question you must ask yourself, if Jesus has power over nature, why couldn't he change bread and wine into his body and blood? The same question is being asked today. We would like to see Jesus. Where is Jesus found? He is found in the sacraments, especially the Eucharist, and the deep recesses of our hearts. It saddens me that people choose not to believe in God because they don't know the many graces they are missing. The Eucharist is part of the new covenant because it is meant that we have a personal encounter with Jesus. And every time we worthily receive the Eucharist, our hearts become open to receiving God's grace and ready to have our hearts transformed so we can live out God's commandments. Jesus knew how important the Eucharist would be for our spiritual well-being, that he didn't back down from this teaching, and he was willing to walk the journey alone, even if it meant all his disciples leaving him which many did. He even asked his apostles if they wanted to leave. Just like those in scriptures, many people today find it difficult to believe. Studies show that about 70% of Catholics don't believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. I believe this is caused by lack of reverence, awe and wonder for God, and trust in Jesus. We might not understand but we are called to trust Jesus and his teachings and to live them out. How we live is, is determined by how much our heart is transformed. The more we let God into our hearts, the more we are able to love and forgive. With this new heart, we become a beacon of hope to others. This hope helps others on their spiritual journey toward heaven and God and God will reward us as is stated in the book of James. He may be sure that anyone who can bring back a sinner from his erring ways will be saving his soul from death and covering over many a sin. That's what Jesus means when he says, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. When I read the verse, whoever loves his life loses it, it told me that as long as we live according to our selfish desires and wants, we will never be able to fully seek out God and become holy as he intended us to be. Many people to, to choose to live this way because they don't believe or trust Jesus. Many of today's problems are caused because of this lack of trust. Our willingness to trust 
is determined through our life experiences. How many times have people hurt us when we trusted them? We then put up our defenses and we find it difficult to trust anyone, even Jesus. These walls put conditions on trusting Jesus. We say things like, I will believe only if I understand, or I will believe if only you help me in my situation. How can we be sure to trust Jesus? Look at the cross and tell me if Jesus cannot be trusted. He died for you and me. That's all the proof that is needed. Lack of trust causes us not to trust ourselves also. We become afraid to accept God's grace because we don't want to be hurt again. This fear paralyzes our spirit. So we become to believe that I am not holy enough for God and God can never forgive me for the things that I have done. So people give up. Giving up only makes it worse because we will never be able to receive God's mercy. Without his mercy, we will not have the will and desire to overcome temptations and sin. We must realize that temptations are part of our spiritual life, and we are in a spiritual battle to overcome sin. When we stop fighting, that's when we become spiritually dead. Jesus also says, whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. I can't say that I know anyone who hates their life, but I do know people who hate the circumstances of their lives. Jesus is telling us that in order to inherit eternal life, we must hate sin and avoid temptation. Temptations start with a bad thought, and that thought must not be reflected upon. Here are a few ways to overcome temptation. First, we must recognize that we are being tempted and bring it back to prayer. Prayer helps us to refocus our thoughts back to God. We must read scriptures, which enables a person to distinguish God's truth and what's right from wrong. And remember, sin is always a choice. We are never forced to sin without a choice. Remember, Christ chose death over sin, and many saints chose to die instead of sinning, and we should try to do the same. And avoid tempt situations that will cause you to sin. If there is something repeatedly tempting you, get rid of it. If pornography is your vice, put the computer or phone in an area where everybody can see what you are watching and hang around people who will help you grow in holiness. I challenge you and myself to reflect on today's scriptures today and welcome God back into your heart so he can change it to a heart that seeks love and to become love. And if you have fallen short of your Lenten goals, it is not too late to start over and imitate Christ and become a beacon of hope. It is with this transformed heart that we can still achieve our Lenten goal. Amen.
covenant with the Lord is written above our hearts. So we trust that God will hear the prayers we make from them. For the church, that we may die to whatever separates us from the covenant that connects us to the Lord, so that we may produce much fruit for the kingdom of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the staff and students of the universities in the diocese, the parishioners of St. Joseph Parish in Rockdale and Immaculate Conception Mission in Roberts, that blessings be bestowed upon them during this diocesan anniversary year. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all of us gathered here today, that during this Lenten spring, God may create in us clean hearts, ready to instill in us a love for the Lord and our mission. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may they experience the healing presence of Christ through the hands of their caregivers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they soon inherit the reward of eternal salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those we remember in a special way in our masses, living and deceased. May they be blessed, especially the parishioners of St. Laborious, Peggy Rosenfeld, Patrick Dillon, and Betty Jean Strausser. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have uh, Irish roots, may God bless them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For them, so families and friends, we promise our prayers. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For the disease of the knowing families, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love and mercy, hear our prayers and grant them to Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Seated and be generous. Please join in our offertory song number 800, O Breathe on Me, O Breath of God, number 800.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise of the Lord is His name. For our good and all of the Church. Hear us, mighty God, and having installed in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. Right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere we give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. We will, thou self denial, should give you thanks. Humble our sinful pride. Contribute to the feeding of the poor and helping us imitate you in your kindness. So we glorify you with the countless angels and with one voice of praise we are playing. During the holy o Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a new fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the time he was betrayed and unwillingly to his passion, he took bread and giving things broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalks. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her the fullness of charity. 
Twitter Francis Apple around with our fashion and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who fall asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Choose members of families and friends who will perish. Peggy Rosenfeld, Patrick Dillon, Beth Jane Strasser. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, the spouse, and the blessed Apostles, Saint Laborius, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may present glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
body of Christ.
whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. This coming Wednesday, after the 7 p.m. Mass, is going to be confession with a few of us. Um, then uh, Station of the Cross. The next week is going to be the last Station of the Cross because the next Friday is going to be Good Friday. Okay. Um, little corrections, you know, when we do the gay Station of the Cross, in this church we start here. So we turn, so when, when whatever deacons or priests is going, we turn like a sunflowers. We're not going to stay next to the Jesus because the waist of the station is supposed to be following. So some of you maybe didn't know, but you should be. Little corrections. If you don't, it's up to you. You're going to be there. My job is to tell you. As a teacher, I'm supposed to tell you what to do. God gave us a free will. I was being Jesus, and many of you are like, over there. So, no, no. We turn it wherever it's going. Deacons, wherever, wherever, wherever it's going to be. You know, that, that's, that is the way of station of the cross. If you don't agree, it's your problem. <laughs> uh, and afterwards, it's soup. Is that it? Soup power? Yes. Yes. So, 6 o'clock, uh, the board is 5 30, and St. Mary is 6, 6 p.m. Praying for uh, those who become a sort of players prayers for uh, praying for members of families and friends, for those who bother us, for those who we bother them. Hail Mary. Closing song number 785, Little Tight Cross number 785. 